Hey everybody, it's Chris Guns. Welcome back to Pro Boxing Insider Radio. And today is the third year anniversary of the death of Arturo Gatti. Maybe one of the greatest warriors, maybe the greatest warrior in the history of the sport. He gave so many exciting moments and uh, anybody who ever saw him fight will not forget that night. All the countless wars he was in, all the highlight reel knockouts. People called him, called him the, the human highlight reel. They called him the most exciting TV fighter of all time. They said he was the guy with the most heart. They said he had the, the best left hook. They said he was the toughest. They said he didn't have enough discipline. They said he partied too much. They said he was a hell raiser. And Arturo Gatti was all those things. And he did it while always being a cool guy and a nice guy and a guy that people like to be around and talk to. And something tells me Arturo is going to be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And let's see what some of those in the boxing world have to say three years after Arturo Gatti. Harold Letterman, it's been three years since Arturo Gatti's passing. What do you remember most about Arturo, Harold? Uh, what everybody remembers most about him is excitement. I mean, the guy would fight through pain. If his hand was broken, he'd just keep on coming. Always gave the fans their money's worth. He was a terrific fighter. He was a great guy, and we all miss him. And when was the first time you saw Arturo fight? Oh, when he first fought for main events, you know, whatever that was, you know, early on in his career. And when did you realize that this kid was something special? Well, you knew that from the first time you saw him. I mean, he was so exciting. You know, he never stopped fighting. Always, you know, always gave the fans their money's worth. And, he, you know, he was just a dynamite performer. And every, everyone has a fight that left the biggest mark on them. What was that fight for you? Probably, I, I, I guess, the first Mickey Ward fight. I mean, and, you know, it was just exciting beyond belief. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. It's you. You could name almost any fight that he had. He turned any yeah. fight into a major, major heart a heart attack waiting to happen. But what makes what makes him remembered and loved in the eyes of the boxing public so much? What made what made people remember me? One thing I know. Yeah. Well, you know, as they say, you know, he, he always gave people what they came to see. I mean, he was the one guy that if you paid to see a great fight, you were going to see a great fight, and that's all there was to it. Win or lose, he was always in great fights. How'd you hear about his passing, Harold? Um, I don't know whether it was on the radio or on television. You know, it was all over the place, and it was just so tragic. Yeah, what, what went through your mind when you, when you first heard the news? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I, I just couldn't believe it, you know, it's total disbelief. Yeah, so do you think he's the most exciting fighter of all time? Uh, certainly one of, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you who the most exciting fighter was. I mean, I loved Eugene Cyclone Hart from Philadelphia, mm. but Arturo Gatti was one of the most exciting fighters I ever saw. Would you put him in the Hall of Fame, think he belongs there? Would I? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Me too. He may not have had the greatest record in the world, but, you know, for what he did and what he gave the fans, definitely. The always affable Harold Letterman. Appreciate your, your time, Harold. Oh, thanks for having me. Take care. Hey. Teron Millette, it's been three years since Arturo got his passing. You fought him. What do you remember about your fight with Arturo? Well, basically, um, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Um, I preferred for him as best I could. Not to take anything away from him, my doctor gave me something I shouldn't have had. But he did the job he should. He did some damn good job. I give him all props. Yeah, and at some point in the fight, he connected with, with a left hook, I'm sure, was his most powerful punch, everyone says. What happened when, when, you, when you felt that, that power for the first time? Did you, did you, was it recognizable? Did you, was, it, was it surprising at all? Like I said, not to take anything from him in the... The, the way I was that, that day, every punch, his jab, everything hurt to the 10th power. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he threw a jab, a fake, and I mean, just all of those hurt. Yeah. What, what do you think makes him so so beloved and, and remembered in the eyes of the boxing public? Well, as a person, and I really did know him, just see him from time to time, he seemed like a real humble person, and uh, he wasn't about running his mouth and talking trash. Very respectful.
Yeah. How'd you hear about his death? You remember what you were doing? Um, I want to say it was on the news, and I, it, I, it shocked me. I called a couple of people, um, and they confirmed it, and I was like, ooh, and he wasn't that old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't know when, when your time's coming, <laughs> you know? You don't. You don't. Yeah. Would you say he's the most exciting fighter of all time? Are you in your life? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say the most exciting. Um, um, no, nah, I wouldn't. I think Sean Bay Mitchell will be yeah. that, that. Will be that person for me. No. But as far as exciting, because he do being on left hander, he did what he was supposed to do, and it was in a fast, extremely fast fashion. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, Sean Bay did his thing. Definitely excited a lot of people who watch him fight. Do you think Arturo belongs in the Hall of Fame? I do, because he's fought some of the best. Yeah. I really do. Never ducked anybody. No, he did. And and did. when you think back to your, to your fight with Arturo, what do you, what do you think of the, the... What stands out basically most in your mind? I wish I could have moved more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least duck from from the last punch, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Prolonged. exactly. I appreciate it, Teron. I mean, he was he was devoted. He, uh, I mean, from what I know of him, and meet him that day and before we fought, he was like a pretty humble, pretty little person. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Teron. Appreciate it. No problem. Always. That's all good. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, it's been three years since the death of Arturo Gotti. Uh, what do you remember most about Arturo? Well, if I'm not mistaken, I met Arturo when him and his brother Joe first came to the United, to United States. You know, I met them in Jersey City. We had a mutual friend, uh, Mario Costa, Costa uh-huh. who owned uh, a few apartment buildings and a few restaurants. In the uh, in the Jersey City area, and uh, they migrated to Mario. Mario took care of uh, Arturo and his brother Joe. You know, real good. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, uh, Joe. Uh, Ma- um, excuse me, Arturo <coughs> was the type of guy. I love to have fun. I mean, we would go hang out at the uh, automobile shows in New York City. Me, uh, Toro, his brother, his uh, manager, and just, just have, you know, have a good time. You know, I never drank or smoked. That wasn't my situation. Yeah. But we would just go out and, and have a real good time and just hang out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, until the wee hours in the morning, the car show was already closed, but we still was hanging out. Uh, Mario had a nice restaurant, a uh, lot of uh, good people hung in the restaurant, and we just became real friends, real, real good friends. We supported him when he fought, and that was like almost the end of my career, so he came to a few of my fights, and uh, we just, you know, got real cool with each other. Yeah. When, when was the first time you saw Arturo actually fight, and what did you think? You know what, it's been a while, but it's, it had to be in Atlantic City mm-hmm. when I first saw him fight. But I see him in the gym because Mario also had a private gym in Jersey City on Tonelli Avenue, a very busy intersection. When you drive down Tonelli Avenue, you can't help but see the gym because it has all kinds of uh, <clears throat> different uh, posters all outside and, you know, inside. It's a real nice gym. And we all trained over there for, for a while. Yeah. And like I said, I saw him fight first in Atlantic City. I don't know who it was. But uh, he was in one of those uh, nuts and guts, knockdown, drag out fights. Mm-hmm. But he managed to get up and knock the guy out. And, you know, that made his career right there. Yeah. When did you realize uh, that Arturo was something special? Maybe. Well, when I found out that he could punch, mm-hmm. because the fight is never over until uh, the, the, the actual fight is over or the roughly counts 10. You know, that was Arturo's 
situation. You know, he, he thought the same way. I can be knocked down 10 or 11 times, but it's not over until the bell rings to end the fight. And Arturo could end the fight at any time. At mm -hmm. any given time, he had that left hook that had knocked you into another zip code. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. And everyone has a has a fight that left a, a indelible print in, in their mind when they think of Arturo Gatti. What fight was that for you? For him and Tracy Patterson was a great fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great fight. It was a great fight. And he had another fight. Whereas uh, I think he was fighting for the title or defending the title. Mm -hmm. He got hurt, I blacked. You know, then it's just a whole lot of fights. He, he fought some non-title fights with other couple other guys that, uh, you know, again, both eyes puffed up, you know, but he finally led that left foot equalizer that uh, took care of everything. Yeah. What do you think makes him so remembered in the eyes of the boxing public? Because he gave the fans 110% mm -hmm. of what boxing was all about. The trilogies with Mickey Ward. I mean, he, I mean, he brought boxing back from the the old age, you know, to the fourth one. Yeah, he did. You know, and, you know, he, he he was real good for boxing. He was good for boxing because, he, like I said, he gave the people 110 percent of what he had. He gave it all and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every time out. How'd you hear about the about his death? I was uh got a call from Buddy McGurk. Hmm. You know, and I, I just saw Arturo a couple of years uh, before he passed away. We were at Buddy's mother's house in Long Island, in Brentwood, Long Island. We had a, a cookout. I think it was on the Fourth of July, and we had a cookout. So you know. I came in, and Toro was there, you know, again, we had a good time talking about old times, you know, because Toro, I think he had one more fight left in him, but he was contemplating retirement also. Mm. And we would, you know, again, we talked about the good old times, how we used to hang out at the car shows and just hang out and have a good time, too. We would hang out all day, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just had a great time that day. That's... The only time, you know, and the, only, the last time I saw him, and we had a great time, because, you know, like I said, every time we see each other, we always talk about the times when we first met, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point in my career, I was still world champion, and he told me that he was going to be world champion. You know, I can tell you the, the exact place where we met, right on Tonelli Avenue, you know, in Jersey City in the diner. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we would all go over there and Mario Costa, he was the owner of two restaurants. So we would go over there. We all had our own seats in the back. All the you know, fighters that Mario knew, we had our private seats in the back. And we just hung out and talked trash. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. You know. He was a fun guy to be around. Oh, man. He was a fun guy. He, crazy, 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 <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I still miss him to this day. I still can't believe, you know, about his death. But he was just a fun guy to be around. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's all I hear. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he didn't. I don't think he had an enemy. Cause he mm. was just a fun guy. Mm -hmm. Just a fun guy. Would you say he's the most exciting fighter of all time, or who, who, who would you say is just as good as Arturo? No one could be better than Arturo as far as excitement. Uh, as far as as far as drama, hmm. he stands alone. As far as drama, yeah. I mean, you can knock him down a few times, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not over till it's over. Would you say he belongs in the Hall of Fame, Eddie? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, he 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 his sellout shows in Atlantic City alone. I mean, sellout. He would sell the joint out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he was still fighting today, he would sell Mad he would sell uh, Atlantic City out like he always does. You know, he, he gave it his all in all. He was a world champion, and he belonged to the Hall of Fame. Not like some guys that don't belong in the Hall of Fame. He belonged to the Hall of Fame. I agree with you, Eddie. 
always generous. Thanks for your time, Eddie. Appreciate it. Bye, man. And there you have it. One of the greatest judges and TV personalities, Hero Letterman, former champion and ex-opponent, Teron Millett, and former light heavyweight champion, great trainer, and one of Arturo Gotti's very good friends in the sport, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. All three guys knew Arturo on different levels, but all had a ton of respect for him, and nobody had a bad word to say about him. And anytime you talk about Arturo Gotti, usually you see that same pattern. Not a bad word to say about the guy. Arturo Thunder Gotti, forever champion and always going to be missed. Rest in peace, champ. And thanks for the memories.